everybody. I feel like the last video you will have seen would have been my second trimester probably. And I said in that video, oh, I'm going to update you all kind of where we're at with our third trimester. And um, and not even an hour after pressing stop on the re on the recording, I was on the phone to my mum and I stood up and it was wet. There was water everywhere and went into panic. Phone Jay and was like, don't panic, but I need you to come home. We went to ADAU and... We went to ADAU and we um, got put on a monitor. I had to have another speculum again. And the um, like medical student and like the registrar who was working with him were like, I don't, we don't think you've gone, like your waters have gone. Like we can't be 100% sure. Like the test will be, if it's positive, it's positive. It means that you've definitely like your waters have broken. Whereas if it's negative, it could be a false negative. Like they're not 100% accurate. So for the next few days, you need to like keep your, keep an eye on yourself and just make sure that everything's okay this is day two and yeah we're just watching everything we're just making sure we're very vigilant about things i'm still taking all my tablets still taking my concoction of medication of aspirin iron tablets omeprazole what else do i take omeprazole iron tablet aspirin i've also got cyclozine if i need it but i haven't been taking that because i haven't been feeling like nauseous to the point where i've been like vomiting and not been able to keep anything down so i've been okay but i have had a cold and when i spoke to the doctor a month ago about my iron level he also said that your white blood cells were also raised. Went to our midwife appointment today and she was like, it's normal for pregnancy for your white blood cells to increase. Even though it shows up on the system as red, like it's fine. It's just your white blood cells, like you're, you're okay. So yeah, that's where we're at kind of. Bump wise, I'll do a little bump update in a bit. I'm going to go get ready in a minute because I'm going out for dinner with some of my girls. And yeah, third trimester is hard. I'm just at the beginning of it. So the girls that are at the end of it tip my hat to you don't know how you're doing it very very tired i am fed up of not being able to put my shoes on so i can like in the mornings it's really like it's fine halfway through the day is okay evening wise trying to put shoes on near enough impossible like you have to get into weird positions to be able to do anything and like the simple things of being able to shave like shave your legs and shaving wherever else you want to shave like it's hard because there's a bump in the way and that bump don't move and you can't see you can't see at all we're living and thriving scary to think that this is our last christmas Christmas, where it's just Jay, Ozzy and I and like next year we'll have a little boy. Crazy to think that so <sighs> I'm gonna stop rambling because I've been rambling for like five minutes. I will have edited this down but I know for definite that tomorrow we've got a baby scan that we're going to and um, just to check that baby's growing how he should be. So yeah I will hopefully film something tomorrow. So are you having an input? Um, We went for our scan yesterday and baby boy is all okay. Um, The charts are looking great um weight is looking okay he is two pounds and 12 ounces um which is crazy to think about um and yeah he's he's all okay everything's going well he is growing to the right height like height right weight yeah he's just he's doing all right so our next scan is in january so we've got a blood test next wednesday and that is the last appointment we've got before christmas and then after new year um that's when everything is gonna kick back in again so yeah i look really pale i'm really puffy i cried um currently in the car on the way to adau it is currently 10 to 3 let's see how long we're in there for i look extremely tired and i'm not surprised so the last clip you would have seen was yesterday before we went to the hospital. We got there at three and we went through like the process. It was really busy and I had a pad on to kind of catch any extra bleeding that there was. And there was some extra bleeding on there. And like because of the amount of time it took to be seen and stuff, it dried. Um, and then at that point, they were kind of just like, yes, yeah, brown. Like I was just sat there like... <laughs> yes brown it's, dry. it's dried because the took so long to get seen I got put on a monitor and he met the criteria which was great really really reassuring and then we were told that we were at the top of the list to be seen by a consultant um because it was imperative that I had a speculum done before they would like discharge me and let me come home. Um, and I had to be seen by the consultant. I was at the top of the list. Um, they were going to check for any bleeding, um, like that they could see like active bleeding. And then they were going to go, they'd make a decision as to what to do. So we sat outside. Well, actually, say we, I did 
so because it was busy they asked when we got there for the men to be stood outside okay that's fine like, i understand that like you need the seats for the pregnant ladies so then tell me why when we come out of having the scan like the monitor that everyone else is sat with their partners but jamie has to go outside don't understand that and for someone that suffers with anxiety and it's on my file it's very clear that i don't like hospitals and i have anxiety and it's social anxiety as well so like it's a social situation being in a hospital like you have to talk to people and it's like it's a lot for me ozzy please leave the candles alone thank you and yeah it just didn't make sense but everyone else was stood there with their partners or their husbands and jamie wasn't allowed to be with me and I had to sit there. Hours went by. So the people that had come in with us, that were in front of us, behind me, been in, seen, got seen by doctors, and I'm still sat there. I was the top of the list. Ozzy, don't attack Gonk. He's in one of those moods today where he's just attacking everything. I'll have to go and rescue Gonk in a minute. Gonk is the same size as him as well, which is quite a scary that he's attacking him. Oi, 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 So I was sat there, sat there, sat there. Hours go past. Hours and was kept being told yep you'll be seen in a minute you'll be seen in a minute yep you're still the top of the list you're gonna get seen you're gonna get seen okay why is everyone else getting checked on <laughs> why is everyone else going back on monitors getting checked out and stuff and i'm still sat in the same seat i'm not allowed to move i'm in pain i'm tired and it got to seven o'clock in the evening and bearing in mind i'd had lunch at 12 hadn't eaten in seven hours and all i'd had was water and at that point, I started getting my little dots and stuff. And I knew that, like, my levels were dropping. So I went and spoke to the, uh, to the midwife again. And I just went, I understand, like, you're really busy and there's emergencies and stuff. But I've been here for hours now. You've said to me, like, I'm going to get seen. And I'm at the top of the list because I'm a priority. Yeah, everyone else is getting seen. And I'm just stood here and, like, well, not stood here. I'm sat here. I'm uncomfortable at this point. I was very teary. I was like, I'm uncomfortable. I'm tired. I've not eaten in seven hours. I just want to go home. Like, if, if I'm not going to be seen, like, you're clearly not worried about me. So why am I staying here? Like, why am I still doing this? Like, no, no, no. Like, let me give you some biscuits. Like, you'll be fine. Um, You'll be seen in 20 minutes. 45 minutes goes past. Doctor has come and gone. Come and gone. Been told twice. You're going to be seen next. You're going to be seen next. More people start turning up and I'm just still sat there. And you know when you're just like, right, I've already asked to go home once, was told I was going to get seen. I've now waited double the amount of time that you said that I was going to get seen and it's not happened. So I then had to add, tally up and weigh up the amount of pain I was in because I was sat in that chair. So like my ribs today are like, I don't know how to explain it, like the <laughs> fleshy part above my ribs on my right hand side from where I was sat yesterday is so swollen. It's sore. It's very tender. Feels like a massive pulled muscle. I was added, like tallying up that pain with the fact that I hadn't eaten in seven hours. Bless Jamie, he was sat there with me the whole time as well. He'd like, at this point, I'd messaged him and was like, everyone else has got their partners and husbands in. I'm not having you stood outside, like, come in and sit with me because I've been sat here by myself the whole time. Like, you need to come and sit with me. So he came and sat with me. He was tired. He hadn't eaten either. So he was, like, his blood sugar levels dropped. Like, and when they drop, like, he runs the risk of passing out quite dramatically. So I was very, like, aware of that. All the shops were shut. Like, the restaurants and stuff were shut. And like, yeah, we didn't know what to do. So we sat there and we were just like, look, we've not had any extra bleeding since I've been checked. Um, they took like pads and then like, then they gave me new pads and stuff. And like the blood that was on the new pad, like I, because I hadn't moved, nothing else had like come out. I find that it tends to only happen if I'm moving. And then, um, we just made the decision, like, the night staff then came, and they were like, yeah, we're in the middle of handover with night staff. So the night, the midwife, the night staff midwife came out and was like, I hear that you want to talk to a midwife. And I just went, yeah, I just want to self-discharge at this point. And she was like, oh, okay. I was like, because I've already asked, like, 45 minutes ago, like, an hour now. Um, and I was told that I was going to get seen by the doctor. And she went, okay, well, I can page, like, because the night doctors have now started and, like, everyone else has gone home. I can page a doctor to see if they'll come and see you, at, like, see you now. Sorry, why haven't they come to see me before then? Because they were to I was told that they were coming to see me. And they've seen other people, ladies that have just randomly turned up from antenatal and stuff. And I'm still just sat here being told that I'm a priority and it's just not happening. 
So yesterday really put me off of ADAU. All the other times we've been, they've been amazing. And that one just really, really put me off. Like, if you think that there is nothing wrong with me, tell me that. And let me make the decision about the fact that I'm discharging myself. Pushing me into a situation where I've been sat there for like... I don't even know how many hours it was in the end. It was like something like six hours on the same chair, in pain, tired, not eating anything. Everyone else is getting checked on by midwives and nurses and I'm just sat there. Like, it wasn't the greatest experience. So Jay and I, like, was really stressful. So, like, has anyone else, like, self-discharged, like, when it comes to, like, babies and stuff? I feel like I'm going to get backlash for this, but I don't know. Like, I'm documenting it because it's how it is. Like, the the weird feeling of, like, you come away from the hospital, and Jamie summed it up really, like, perfectly. You come away from the hospital with, like, half the reassurance that you need because you didn't get, like, the extra bit that you were waiting for. So then you end up coming home and you're, like on hyper alert more than like you would normally. And I think the only thing that was more reassuring was the fact that I know I'm going back to the, the hospital again today to go and get my week 28 bloods done and to kind of have like a checkup and stuff. So at that point I was just kind of like, look, I'm just, it's fine. But yeah, it just, it wasn't, wasn't a good experience and it's just put me off of it a little bit. Look how cute my flowers are. They're really sweet. Anyways, I feel like I should probably put a bump update in this. Should we do bump update? I look like the side of a size of a house at this point. It's a very high up bump. Jamie made me nervous because he said that like this is the week that normally the bumps drop. So I don't know. Um, but I haven't actually filmed anything in a while. Um, the last clip that I know I've definitely got was me going to get my blood taken at the hospital and that was like the first hospital appointment that I went by myself, which go me, it's actually happened. I can actually go to the hospital by myself, which is a miracle. But yeah, I had my bloods taken and I had to do like an MRSA swab as well. Um, and no news is good news and I've not heard anything back about that. Here comes Oswald. Hello baby. His little tail's wagging. He's so happy. Um, and then we had, we've had another scan since then and um, she's referring us potentially to the antenatal clinic. Oh no, that's my next midwife appointment. So yeah, anyway, um, we had measurements taken and baby boy's belly, his abdomen was a little bit on the bigger side and she was like, I'm gonna refer you to antenatal um, and just to see if they potentially wanna do like gestational diabetes test on you. I've not heard anything yet, touch wood, so I'm presuming if I hear anything, it will probably be this week anyway. Um, and then after we had the scan, I also spoke to the doctor because the doctor wanted to talk to me about my blood test and my iron levels have come back up to normal, which is great. I didn't realize they were so low. They were like one, one point something. They're now back at 11. So the iron tablets are working, even though they taste horrendous. We're in a positive place with that. We had our week 32 midwife appointment on Friday. And I went to that one on my own just because we couldn't coincide it with like working hours and Aussie and stuff and like juggling him. So Jay was like, look, if you wanna go on your own, like you can go on your own if you want me to come, like we'll come up with something. But I was like, look, it's fine. I'll just go on my own. So went to the midwife appointment. Didn't have like my normal midwife. I had two other lovely ladies. And I basically just said to them about how I was feeling that I'm very nervous when it comes to the idea of giving birth and I'm seeing lots of negativity online and like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and I'm getting like a little bit freaked out about it to the point where I was in denial that I'm actually gonna have to give birth and I was like, I don't wanna give birth, <laughs> so yes. Um, oh, I also had an anti, no, anaesthetist appointment. Um, so basically I had to go and double check with my, well, with the anaesthetist department at the hospital. Um, because when I was younger, I had an operation under my chin and um, I was left with a scar that was quite close to like 
my throat and like my neck and they just wanted to make sure that I would be okay to be put to sleep if I had to worst case scenario and that went okay she answered loads of questions she was like look let's use the opportunity to kind of put your mind at ease about other things that are going on so she gave me like every single option of pain relief or circumstance or anything and she was like this is the risk factor for it this is what happens this is how many we normally do this is what normally happens like this is what I'm doing this is what like my team do so I felt a little bit more at ease about it but then I just see all the negative stuff on the internet and it just makes me nervous and I explained that to the ladies on Friday at the midwife appointment because I was just like I just want to be careful because I'm terrified I'm terrified of dying during labour and yeah He's now barking for me to shut the, the door. Give me two secs. I think that's all the appointments that I've had. I'm up to date with my doctors, had my midwife appointments, had my hospital appointments, had an uh, antenatal and the anaesthetist appointment. So next up is, I'm looking at this and I feel like there's something before this, but maybe it's not, maybe it is that. I don't know. I can't keep up with how many appointments I have to go to. And obviously it's a positive thing because it means that like they're taking care of me and like they're making sure that baby boy's okay and everything. But there's just so many appointments and I'm just so thankful that I'm not in the job that I was in before because even though I know like legally they have to let you go to these appointments, they wouldn't have been happy about it and they would have made my life an absolute misery because of how many appointments I would have had to have gone to. So <laughs> props for having a absolutely a boss I was going to say fiance, no, boss, husband, who has his own company. So you're allowed to go to your appointments and you can literally pick whenever they are and they're random and you go with whenever they have a slot and it's ease. Anyways, I've been filming for seven minutes. I'm going to go and I will do another little video update later on. Morning. It is Thursday the 25th of Jan. And today I am going to the hospital for a haematology appointment. I'm not in sure, like I'm not entirely sure what it's going to entail. All I know is that it's trying to work out why I bleed really easily because my platelets are always like the right amount, but um, I bleed quite easily. And when I've had operations previously, like the doctors and consultants and stuff that have done the the operations have come back and gone, she bleeds quite a lot. Um, one of them being when I had a breast lump removed, um, the consultant came back, that's my toast, the consultant came back to my mum and was just like, yeah, as soon as like we cut into her, like there was just blood everywhere. So we're going to go work out whether I have a genetic disorder, which I'm not entirely sure how, like what they have to do to do that. But all I know is that I have an appointment at one o'clock at the hospital and I need to go to that. I have done behind me all of the three to six months washing for baby boy all of his like first bits and everything are done and I was just saying to Jay like as soon as anything else comes in now we can just wash it and it's good to go I don't have to worry about doing like a bulk wash so what I will probably do is leave that to dry in front of the radiator for a little bit longer and then I will come back from my appointment and iron it I don't want to look at this arm. So I've just got back from haematology. And I'm going to take this off because I need to be able to... Oh my god, how do I get... I just got back from haematology. <sighs> um, I've got to go through basically genetic testing, kind of, for my blood to work out whether I've got a clotting slash blood disorder. Because... I am pregnant. When you're pregnant, your clotting factors and stuff and like your stuff to do with your blood, like it affects different factors in it. So she was like, we can do it now, but we're gonna have to basically do it all again after. Currently I've had six massive bottles of blood taken from me, which made me feel really woozy in the chair, but we move. And then I had to proceed to sit there for like 10 minutes. I think it was, it was like 10 minutes cause she finished at like 20 past. And I was still sat in the chair at like ten past, at half past, because it hadn't, it wouldn't clot. My arm would was just kept. She lifted the cotton wool off, and every time she lifted the cotton wool off, it bled more. We put loads of pressure on it, and I mean loads of pressure because I'm used to having blood tests and having to like push my arm like crazy. 
still kept bleeding. So then I was, she was like, look, keep an eye on it and then you can go. Um, because it took for a while for it to clock. We then are waiting for the results to come back. They're having to like rush me through. They've got like a really short time frame because I am 34 weeks tomorrow. And at 37 weeks, I have an appointment that basically decides whether I'm gonna be induced, etc., etc. at like 37 weeks. So we've got to, I feel really bad. I feel like I'm bumping the queue, but then at the same time she was like, we need to get like, your level's right so that if you have got some kind of clotting disorder, we can give you the right medication whilst you're giving birth. So another thing, another thing everybody, another thing girls and boys for me to get anxious about and stressed. I've got to go back in two weeks yet to find out the results. And then I've got to go through the whole process again when I am not pregnant to work out what my clotting factors and etc etc are like when I have given birth and I'm a normal human being again. So it is just one thing after another and I phoned Jay and I was just like, so we've got to go back again. It's probably worth you coming with me to that one. Now I am home and sat with my doggy. I thought I would give you like a debrief of what happened at my midwife appointment. So I really struggled to do a urine sample today. I don't know why. Um, I think it's because I went to the toilet at six o'clock this morning because I was bursting and then drank loads. And I mean loads. So now it's like I keep going to the toilet because I just can't hold it in. But I managed to do enough of a urine sample so that the lady could test it. My midwife could test it. Saw someone different again today. I saw a lovely lady called Jo. She was lovely. And then we were just, we spent a lot of the time talking about like my mental health. And I've been very open and honest about my mental health and like the struggles I've had with it. And I am, the closer I get to the end of my pregnancy, my anxiety is getting worse. There are lots of factors that are influencing that, but I don't want to go into it. But I spoke it through with her and she basically just gave me some reassurance and she was just like, look, you're doing the right thing because you're talking about it. Just keep doing that. So yeah, keep doing that. I went over with her about my haematology appointment that I had yesterday, about my genetic disorder that I've potentially got, not got, like my blood disorder clotting thing that I have. We also went over upcoming hospital appointments that I've got and just things to look out for. We then spoke about my choice of how I'm going to feed baby boy and we just went over all the steps for breastfeeding and just making sure that everything's okay. I forgot to ask her a question. That's really annoying. I asked her everything else though. There was just one question that I've just missed that I've just realised. Um, but I can ask that next time when I go. And then she basically was just like, yeah, your next appointment is going to be the big one, talking about your birth plan. That one's coming in two weeks time. Oh, and we'll talk about the elephant in the room, the fact that I am wearing Jamie's t-shirt. I'm now at that stage of the pregnancy where I have to wear my husband's clothes because I just wanna wear a baggy tee. And to wear a baggy tee, I have to wear his clothes. I'm really filming out of my comfort zone because my face and skin just, it's having a moment, but this is part of the pregnancy. And I know it's because I'm coming to the end of it that my hormones are all over the place. So we're just not gonna talk about it. We'll wind back to Thursday. Um, so Thursday, the 1st of Feb, Jay and I ended up in ADAU. Um, I had restricted, no, reduced movement. Um, couldn't feel him at all, like felt no movement whatsoever. There was just nothing, there was no movement. Like there was not even like a niggle, like normally you can feel like a little something. I felt nothing. So we went in, had the monitor, had some tests done. They were like, yeah, like you're completely fine. And I'm like, but I can't feel anything. So like, why, what, do, how do I monitor my movements and stuff at home if I'm not feeling anything? So the consultant actually um, did a scan on me and just checked that baby boy was okay. He was okay. He was basically kicking my placenta and still does click my, kick my placenta. So I don't actually feel anything. If he's kicking the placenta, it's like a shock absorber. So I wasn't really feeling anything. So she showed me on screen. We monitored it. We came home, I laid down, 
could start to feel like little things, like tiny, tiny, tiny little movements. Friday was a lot better. Saturday and Sunday I had movements. Yesterday I had little movements and then like I laid down the whole time Jamie was on the way home and then I managed to feel him like completely. And it just seems to be, he doesn't have like a set routine, doesn't have like a set pattern. And I think that's what's quite scary when like your doctors and your midwives tell you like, oh, you're gonna have like a pattern, you're gonna get used to him. But I've got an anterior placenta. It blocks a lot of the movement. So I'm, it's very hard to work out what his pattern is, but we're going with it. To today, so Tuesday the 6th, we had our last fetal growth scan. So we went and it was really weird because it's like we've done like a massive full on loop um, because I went to ADAU they have moved they moved my appointment so I was meant to be going on Thursday but I went today and um, we've done like a massive loop at the hospital because we've ended up rather than having the scan at antenatal we went back to where we went for the first ultrasound in the ultrasound department which was really it was like a really strange feeling to just be back in where it all kind of started I had my scan he's measuring on the 77th percentile I want to say he's 77 so he's on the 70th percentile which is fine it's still obviously more than 50 percent but he is whereas like his last one was quite high it's kind of dropping now so he's fine he's measuring at like six pounds and five ounces which is crazy because Jay's like that was more than what I weighed and I was like yeah I was like six pound four when I was born so the fact he's six pound five explains why everything's really heavy really sore I'm really uncomfortable but we had our growth scan i'm gonna film tomorrow because tomorrow we've got back-to-back -back appointments we have got hematology so we might get some fingers crossed some results as to why i bleed she might not have any answers might have a genetic condition might not have a genetic condition just want to know what's going on either way and then we also have after lunch a midwife appointment so we'll be going to that too but jay has got kind of like the majority of the day off so he's going to be with me so i'm going to vlog i'm going to film snippets for him i am currently upstairs in bed i'm very uncomfortable really struggling with sleeping really struggling with getting comfortable being able to sit stand even on the ball like my ribs hurt which is sore and it's because he's on my left side just doesn't seem possible that we're coming up to 36 weeks still feels like yesterday like we found out so the fact that we're coming up to 36 weeks mental absolutely mental